Hi, it's me again, Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes, and today's handover is on a Auckland Ford Custom Camper. So as we start the walk round on the vehicle, on the driver's side first, the first point you get to, which is underneath the vehicle, is how you'd fill and empty your fresh water. So this is a valve, so if you are filling, you need to get a hose pipe, hose lock end, fits on there straight away, connect the other end to this to the sides tap so you will need a few fittings because some of the sides have different taps it's normally just a brass tap anyway so connect there once you've connected you need to turn this red handle onto its side it's full at the minute so it's going to empty if you are filling you just push against that because you you wouldn't that's the valve closed you're never going to get any water in by pushing against the valve so down to its side it's going to let the water out at the moment so if you want to empty it there you go if you want to fill it you'll obviously have your hose pipe on it'll be pushing water into the tank hooking the vehicle up when you're at home for charging it or if you want a sight it's very simple get the hooker bleed lift the flap on the end of the hooker bleed hook the van up first then the sight and do it in reverse order when unhooking along with pressing the blue clip down to release the hooker bleed Below you do have an external gas point, so if you're planning on doing a bit of outdoor dining with a canak or external barbecue, all you need is a fitting to go in here, which is a quick release connector and some gas hose and a couple of Jubilee clips to connect it all together and you can then connect to the underslung tank on the vehicle so you don't have to carry a spare bottle to cook outside and turn the tap on and it'll allow gas to come to your external point. Here you do have your true mat vent, so this is your flue for your heating and hot water system. It's a gas and electric heating and hot water system, but it'll work more on gas, the flue, because it allows the fumes out. On electric it's submerged, so you're fine, it's just for allowing the gas fumes out the van. On the back of the vehicle you've got your high level brake light with reverse camera your parking sensors and you've got a deadlock on there so you can deadlock the back doors so at the back of the van you do have so if you plan on making this back lounge into a bed you need to put the lats in so they just slot in and they're the lats so they just need to be stored in the vehicle somewhere handy to make the, the bed up so they're in there at the moment Underneath here is the point for releasing your spare wheels, so that's why the cover's there. So there'll be a tool kit in the cab underneath the driver's footwell. So when you open the door, there'll be a big cover, lift that off, and there'll be a tool kit slid in the footwell step. And there is a spare wheel underneath here. If you release this cover behind here, you do have your boiler so it's a it's mainly for when the vehicle is serviced if there's any problems with it it's a inspection panel for the technician to work on your boiler and pipe work you don't really need to be in there but that just slots in and locks into place with the bolts like so Always remember, you've got your freestanding tabletop there. Always make sure that you put that one first in this one. External shower point, so there'll be a fitting bullfinch clips in there. You can select hot or cold, but obviously you do have to make sure that the hot water's been on first. If you're doing it from having the van stood, it is only going to be cold until the water's warmed and been on. Here you do have your gas filling point. So this is your gas connection when filling from an LPG station. So you push the fitting on, it's a big round nozzle and you wanna twist it on and you wanna flick the lever back onto the gun so it's pressurized. And then you just press and hold onto the, on the pump dial until simply it won't take any more. And that is your gas system full with gas. But well, that's a 25 litre gas tank and there is an indication of how much gas is on board inside the vehicle. Fill the vehicle with fuel. So 
located here by the passenger door and with it being a Ford it's an easy fill diesel system so you just push your fuel fill fuel nozzle into here and it will fill so there's no cap to take off you do have your weight plate so 3.325 gross vehicle weight 5325 train weight front and back axle weights and then to Open the bonnet using the Ford key above the Ford logo and let her in. To the left, pops the bonnet to the right, releases it. And in here, you do have your screen wash, your brake fluid, your power steering fluid, your oil fillers down there, your dipsticks there for checking the levels and your coolant here and then to give or receive a drum start you'd earth off here so sorry no you wouldn't you would put your positive on here and you'd earth off there so earth off here the outside of the engine positive on there for giving or receiving a jump start as the main car battery is underneath the driver's seat with it being a ford so coming back to where the freshwater fill up is i forgot to mention but there's a little pipe here this is your waste from your sink so you'll need a dish an aqua a waste master just to sit under here and collect the water and then you, de you can decant that to the waste point on the site and get rid of it so you'll need something to sit under here to c collect the water from the waste which is just here so once you come into the vehicle to turn the power on turn the switch on here and select leisure battery it'll show the leisure battery reading as well it's not wired to the vehicle, so when you go to the vehicle, it will not read the vehicle battery. It's only wired to the leisure battery. So select leisure. You can turn your lights on, and you can turn your water pump on. And it will start to pressurise, and then, as you see in there, it's just gone quiet. And then as soon as you open the tap, it will kick back in. All your fuses, so do carry some spares. All your trips with your main trip tester so if you're on mains power it'll trip so if you're thinking you're not receiving power try here before you start messing on with the cable if the vehicle trips you've got power if it doesn't then it probably is a cable and you can turn your battery charger on which charges your leisure battery but it'll also kick the fridge in so that is your main on off for the fridge as well this is your gas level indicator and as you can see there it's just green and just full this is your heating and hot water panel i'm going to insert a video of how to use your truma inet panel next so that's the next clip coming on how to use this panel so to operate your digital truma cp control panel to turn the system on and off you press and hold to turn it off press it once to turn it on and it'll come on and then to get into the menu, you just press it once. You'll notice you've got a thermometer with it in a van flashing at the top corner. If you press enter, this is how hot you want your vehicle. So you've got all the way off in the summer when you don't want the heating, or you've got all the way to 30 degrees in the winter when it's very cold. So once you're happy, so if we say 27 degrees there, that's how hot I want the inside of the motorhome to be. I'd press enter and that'll save that at 27 degrees. Now we've got a thermometer in some water. This is how hot you want your water. So if you don't have any water on board, you'd have it on off. 40 degrees for showering. 60 degrees for doing your dishes. But it's entirely up to yourself how hot you want your water. Or you've got boost, which will turn off your heating and prioritize your water first. But for this, we'll just say 60 degrees because we want the heating to run along with the water. Next, you've got what source you're heating the water and the vehicle off. So you've got gas. So make sure your gas bottle's on and it's turned on. You've got mix one, which is 750 watts of electric and gas. You've got mix two, which is... 1850 watts of electric plus gas so you'd use mix two in the winter 
if you're away and it was really cold use a mix too will boost the vehicle up the temperature because you're using both sources together then you can turn it over to electric so you've got electric 750 watts el1 and you've got el2 which is 1850 watts of electric don't waste your gas if you're on a site unless you're away and it's really cold and you've using mix two for the first 10 15 minutes then allow electric to continue to heat the motor home and maintain the temperature because if you're on a site you've paid your site fees after all you'll not want to waste your gas then you've got your fan in the top right hand corner so eco or high or boost this is just a 12 volt assisted fan so eco will use less 12 volt High obviously uses more fan speed, so it's going to use a little bit more 12 volt. And Boost uses full power on the fan, which is going to use the most out of the 12 volt battery. Sleep with it on Eco because it's a lot quieter than sleeping with it on anything else. If you're going to sleep with the heating on in the winter. You've got a timer so you can time the heating to come on and off. Just the once though. Clock in the middle and then spanner. You can go all the way down to reset and to reset the control panel if you ever get a warning triangle in the middle reset preset click again and it will restart your control panel and then to turn off press and hold and it'll say off and it'll completely turn itself off in your fridge there's a controller at the back which you can select temperature and you can turn it all the way round the minimum and off on here as well but if you wanted to just leave it on like i say you can turn it on and off from the main control panel on the electric unit there at the front but you can regulate the temperature here so you might want to have it on max when pre-chilling when you put some again after it's been chilled for a few hours you might want to turn it down and there's your freezer box which is really cold so that does work as it should one thing I will say when not using, just leave the door open just to allow air to circulate in and out to avoid smells and mold from growing in the fridge with trapped air. On the top you do have your gas burners. So there you've got two gas burners. Allow them to cool before you put the glass down otherwise you will shatter the glass and here water which is really hot there and then your pump will kick back out and then one thing before travel just make sure these glass lids are put down in the corner here you do have two usbs and a main socket Got a load of storage in the kitchen. Microwave is a mains microwave, so just press here for every 30 seconds and then you can stop and clear it there, or you can turn it and select the time on the dial. Porta potty. Worktop to put your telly, so you've got a 12 volt and an aerial point on here for your TV to stand. And then coming further back, so to check your water level of your fresh water, just press this button here. And as you can see there, we have a half a tank of fresh water on board. When it goes into the red, it's in reserve, so it means you've got to refill it. 12 volt, 230 volt socket, and you've got your thermostat for your heating. So that your heating's always got to be above the outside air temperature, and that picks up for the heating system there how hot the vehicle is and tells it when it's reached the temperature so it'll turn off and when it drops to turn back on underneath your bench seat on the driver's side just behind the kitchen you do have the location of your leisure battery so your leisure battery is in this box you've got your tire inflation kit so it does come with a spare wheel but there's a compressor and an inflation kit as well And you do have your boiler at the back. So the best thing to do with when winterizing 
is you want to drain off your your fresh water tank drain off your boiler so to drain off your boiler all you do is lift this yellow toggle up with it with the pump off and it will drain all the 10 liters this, that this boiler stores so it stores 10 liters of water at any one time directly out of the vehicle then what you do is you put the pump on turn it on for 10 seconds but leave your tap open so it spits any water out of the tap and make sure that no water is left stored in here when we're experiencing colder temperatures in your fresh water tanks because they are just plastic pipes and it is a costly mistake to make if you leave any water in the vehicle so stand that up on end leave the tap open inside the vehicle open your fresh water tap turn your pump on for 10 seconds to blow the water out of the filter and turn it off when you come to reuse the van lie that back down like so put your hose on and fill the water close the tap put the pump on open the tap on the cold slowly go to the hot and it'll cough sputter and it'll spit the water out into here until you get a pressurized flow of water out of the hot side of the tap this is when you know that your boiler is full with 10 liters because it's pressurized by opening the hot side and it transfers the water from the fresh water tank into the boiler so just do please drain your boilers down because if not there is a chance you could break the boiler and it isn't covered under warranty as frost damage is your responsibility to drain and maintain the vehicle in the winter your lights are controlled via these switches so you've got your spotlights around your skylight you've got your kitchen lights you've got your led blue lights 